Hey there, everybody. This is Drek. And I am Shadow. And we are doing a Let's Play of the original Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Gen for the Sega Genesis, uh, being played on the PS3. Uh, Alex is behind the helm for the Spring Yard Zone, the third zone. And uh, quite frankly, in my at least I may be mistaking this, Alex, this is kind of the first starting of a Sonic staple of trying to create a, uh, a pinball-esque type of zone, or at least Sega was trying to aim for that aesthetic. Yeah, I think it is kind of like a pinball, kind of a kind of casino game level. And you're right, it has become a long-standing part of the franchise. Yep. And, you know, not necessarily a, a staple of the franchise I would enjoy, but I can appreciate them. They are The zones are always very bright, colorful, and uh, I especially oh. like the the one from 3 that gives uh, more of a more of a carnival aesthetic. So that's always uh, something I can appreciate. Now while he is working through the Spring Yard Zone, I'm also just trying to take care of some of the commentary, some of the questions that uh, people may be asking. Uh, once again, this is not a completionist run. This is more along the lines of uh, we wanted to enjoy an old game and we wanted to enjoy it with you guys. So we're not really going for the highest points, the lowest times. We're going to have a good time. As well as uh, give you some fun facts, maybe some story facts that you may not have known about the Sonic franchise. And also to those who are new that have never actually tried a Sonic game, welcome. We, we appreciate you coming on and, and enjoying this great game with us. All three of you. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, this game's been around. They're kids. Long enough. Uh, you have to be extremely, extremely young to, I think, not have played a Sonic game anymore. True, but. All right, big ring. All right, big ring. So we got a chance at a Chaos Emerald. Or continue at least. Uh huh. Oh no, it's more pinball, Alex. What are you gonna do? If people think that this zone looks familiar, well, yeah, it kind of does. Uh, like I said, this isn't completionist. We're just trying to run through the game and uh, uh, allow you guys to enjoy the the experience of the zones themselves. Oh my gosh, that was pathetic. Ah, ah well, thirty one rings. One of, the, one of the benefits of this game is that we've, we've said this before, but the Chaos Emeralds that you get in these special stages don't really have a benefit here aside from maybe an extra few points. Uh, so at this point, we're not really pursuing them. Maybe for a later game we will, just to uh, get the added benefit of unlocking Supersonic, but who knows. Uh, personally, I'd rather not play through a Supersonic and just kind of cheeses the game. But, but, but... It makes you look like Goku! <laughs> yeah, Sonic Team's definitely a fan of the Dragon Ball series. Uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> look, I have appreciation for them, but man, even I could have told that off. Like, I had not seen Dragon Ball Z as a kid, but I played this again as an adult, and I went, Wait, I just realized his, his hair looks very familiar! I wonder if that was actually a pull or a, a nod to something. <laughs> wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Okay. And we are in Act 2 of the Spring Yard Zone right now. Looks like we are doing fine. And this is uh, Zone 3 of 6, I believe, for the first game. It was not a very long game. No, it was pretty experimental at its time. This is really kind of the first of its kind, this really big speed-based game. Yeah. And so... We don't really get into the lengthier games until probably about 2, because 2 had, a, I remember, a lot more zones than this. Yeah, even more, even a little fewer than what was in the original plan, but still quite a much lengthier game than this one was. Yep, because they, you know, as with most first games, it's just an experiment. It's it's to see whether or not you're going to like the aesthetic, and if, and if you don't, then they got to move on to something else that you will like. And uh, thankfully, Sonic worked out, just like Mario did. And even though Mario's sequel was odd, um, it still was much bigger and much more difficult, I want to say. At least to those who... Uh, Not the were... original one, right? The whole Doki Doki Panic thing. Well, if you had Doki, then you were, you were prepared, at least in my opinion. But when you compare Mario 1 to Mario 2, different gameplay, ergo different kind of difficulty... Uh, not knocking Mario 2. 
I'm not saying I don't like it. It's not my favorite of the Mario franchise, but that's beside the point. We're playing Sonic here. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're playing... talking about Mario. And... <laughs> How dare you talk about Mario? Flame on! Um, well, I'm a Nintendo fan. Uh, I'm a Nintendo guy, so obviously I grew up with Mario before Sonic. Oh, whoa, 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 nice save. No, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, stupid rotation and bumpers <laughs> and everything else. I am very yeah. nice. All right, well, we are at Act 3, and so Robotnik is near. All right, Spring Yard Zone. Now, just to knock out another question here, uh, out of curiosity, Alex, what, what would you consider your favorite level of the original Sonic? Uh, this first game, I'd probably say Starlight Zone. Uh, it's just, it's a tremendous fun amount to play, and it's perhaps one of the catchiest tunes in the game, next to, say, Green Hill Zone. Well, the music in this game is really catchy, but I think a lot of people just remember Starlight Zone so very well. Um, yeah, I have some faint memories of it, uh, mostly from Scrap Brain, and that's just because I spent a lot of time there. Yeah, Scrap Brain's the marathon level of this, but... <laughs> It's still not as bad as uh, Eggman Land and Sonic Unleashed. Mm, well, I didn't play that, but I saw I did saw a playthrough of it. Yeah, I was gonna say you'd know or you'd know better than I did because I, I never played those games. Well, that you know, Eggman Land in that game is ridiculously long. Oh, Jiminy Christmas! Yeah, no, that's one of the things I do not like of of some platformers. They intend to make a, a level more lengthy than it actually needs to be. I would actually say, and I'm going to get flamed for this, but uh, Mega Man is very guilty of this because you have Dr. Wily's castle, and and even though, yes, the levels are fun, yes, the music is great, you always end up going, no, not another dot. No, I can't do another Wily level. Oh, what the heck? Oh, well, we had a bug. A crush. Okay. How appropriate. The crab was the bug. <laughs> it wasn't the crab this time. It, it got crushed somehow. All right, well, we are going again. Okay, we're back, from, back to start. Let's see if I can get the shield. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. 200, or 200 greens in this case. Oh yes, we can go with the actual currency if you want. All right. Yeah, I gotta say my favorite level of the original Sonic. I like Starlight, but Marble holds, uh, Marble Zone holds uh, a lot of fond memories just because I remember spending a lot of time there uh, and loving the fact that it was the introduction to this game as a platformer rather than just a bunch of blast, blast processing and speed. So that would actually be my favorite of the game. Obviously, a lot of my more favorite levels are not from this game. They'd, they'd probably be from either 3D or, or later on in the 2D era. I, you, when you say 3D, you mean the 3D games, right? Yeah, I'm talking like... Uh, Not 3D Blast. No. Or Mickey Island, no, as it's no. called in uh, No, we, we, we do not consider... Uh, I do not cons Adam does not consider those games in the Sonic franchise because uh, he did not like them at all. And I'm talking <laughs> to myself in the third party. That's kind of weird. But it's working! <laughs> uh, no, when I talk 3D era, I'm talking adventure. I'm talking right. adventure 2. I played a little bit of Heroes, but that was pretty much it. I never touched, Le uh, what is it, Le uh, Legend of the Rings? Secret uh, Rings, right. Secret of the Rings, Black Knight, Unleashed, never touched any of those. Uh, mm -hmm. Colors, I have not touched. The last game that I probably played was uh, Generations. Aside from... and. I don't think anybody's happy to admit that they played this Sonic 06. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, or as I like to call it, the broken game of brokenness. Uh, because it really was a broken game. It was. I cannot think of a, biggest, a bigger fumble for Sega than rushing that out the door. Uh, just because you could tell a lot of levels had not been tested, which was sad because I'd heard a lot of the level design was awesome, and having seen some of it in Generations, those levels were pretty cool. And if that game had not gotten rushed out the door and been buggy as hell, I probably would have walked away thinking better of it. 
Absolutely. I think it could have truly been a real big uh, classic for it. Could have been a new classic, being the 15th anniversary title. But, you know, the game just, it was definitely rushed out the door. It wasn't thought out and wasn't planned very well. It was too, the story was ridiculous. The game was play was terrible. Everything about the game is awful. Except the music. The oh, and the uh, another thing that, that we have not mentioned is, is very simple. Sonic plus humans equals not good story. And yes, I know. Adventure 2, I'm, I'm complimenting, but that had humans too. Yeah, they weren't noticeable. And neither was uh, Adventure. I mean, the only mention of humans I think I remember in Adventure was the first cutscene where well, you saw a SWAT team. Well, the hub world was filled with humans, and you could talk to them. But, yes, but... It, you know, it, it it's still... And I don't mind that. I think that actually adds yeah, a bit of a nice touch to it, a bit of a nice aesthetic. But 06 took it way too far with, you know, sort of an implied romance between the princess. Yeah, and, I never got that. You know, and it, it really doesn't work. I mean, let's ignore the... Uh, besides the whole, you know, bestiality aspect of that... <laughs> I mean, just look at Sonic's model. His hands are bigger than her head. Yeah, it's it's just... And on top of that, the the way that they made the girl look, it just didn't... It did not help that at all, uh, in my opinion. But, you know, another thing that also didn't help was incorporating human stuff into this universe. Like, for example, uh, from Adventure 2, where, where Rouge the Bat was a member... I think it was of the FBI or the CIA. It was gone. Or, uh, yeah, but she was a sh secret agent. And so at that point, you're like, really? She's talking to the president. That doesn't make sense. Okay, and we are at Robotnik. I gotta say, some of the, you know, when you compare this to its competitor Mario in boss music, way better than the, the castle theme, but... <laughs> yeah, definitely. But again, this is you know this was a 16-bit game compared to an 8-bit game. Oh, crap! Oh, that was close too. That was a glitch right there, folks. And I didn't even hit the last checkpoint before the boss, so I have to go back a little further. That's okay. That's okay. We we are gonna make good time here. Obviously, we know where we're going. Let's see if I get stuck on the bumpers again. Yay, I didn't get stuck. Yay, make time, make time! Now, I don't, I don't know about you, Alex, but like when I first touched these sneakers, I never liked them as a power-up, and it was just because they got me killed a lot of the time just yeah. trying to play this game. I, they're fine, you know, the old speed boost power-ups are they're great in, you know, stages like Green Hill Zone, but... A lot of times they don't work in a lot of later stages because there's uh, a lot of bottomless pits or cliffs or enemies to run into. So, yeah, I've never liked the power sneakers too much beyond early stages. I'll agree with that. I mean, Green Hill, yeah, it works. But then you start getting into the platforming and you just dread that box. And you avoid it with a passion. Okay, uh, come on. <laughs> Alright, mustached man, come on down. Now, for those who are, are new to the franchise who actually don't know this, but this is a fun little fact, in the development process, Robotnik was actually supposed to be the hero of the Sonic games. He was he was going to be the protagonist. Uh, and then they just decided to uh, go with more of an animal feel. Another fun fact about it is that the Robotnik character was... And if, I, and if I've got this wrong, then Alice will correct me, but... Uh, he was based off of Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, that's right. Which is just weird. Because if you think about it and look at it from a design standpoint, yeah, he kind of looks like it. But it just makes you sit there and go, you really based it off Teddy Roosevelt? Wow. <laughs> I've never gotten it down to this close before, but I'm probably being a little extra cautious down here. Down to the water, down to the water. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. That's okay. He took you, but you took him with it, with you. <laughs> Yeah, I've never usually. I usually don't go down that close, but I'm probably being a little more cautious than I need to be. Yep. And that is Spring Yard Zone, everybody. Thank you again for watching. Next up will be the Labyrinth Zone, and we'll, we're going to be doing a change of the helm again. Once again, I am Drac. And I'm Shadow. And we will see you in a bit.